All right, now we're joined by Troy Rank of the Denver Post uh, following the Denver Broncos making the selection of Oregon Ducks quarterback Bo Nix. Troy, thanks for taking the time for us, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Hey, anytime. You, now, you just wrapped up with Bo, right? Yeah. just a, He finished his introductory press conference, and then I had a little bit of time with his family just now to talk to him. What's been your, your impression of Bo uh, right out of the gate? Well, he's polished. I mean, I was just talking to someone, a member of the Broncos PR staff, said that might have been the most impressive press conference from a first-round draft choice they've seen in the last 20 years. I mean, he's smart. He's polished. He's, you know, he's just – he gets it in terms of – if you would have told me he was a two- or three-year starter in the NFL based on that press conference, I would have believed it. Uh, he also showed an edge to him, you know, his competitiveness. I think he's going to fit in well. Here, I mean, unfortunately here he walks into a situation where they've had 13 starting quarterbacks since Peyton Manning, Oof. and only two have had a winning record. Trevor Simeon at 13-11 and 11 and Brett Rippon at 2-1, and one, and they just paid basically Russell Wilson $124 million for 11 wins. So he's walking into a baptism by blowtorch if he's the starter. But I will say his experience, 61 starts, I don't know if we'll ever see that again in FBS, and dealing with the adversity of Auburn, at least gives him a, puts him in a position to succeed here where there were, like when Paxton Lynch came here, I mean, I immediately thought, like, this guy's got no chance. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the pressure. Because the, being the Broncos quarterback is the most visible position in the state. With all due respect to Nikola Jokic and the Avalanche, the Broncos are the state religion even when they're bad, and they've been really bad for the last eight years. You know, as we heard from Sean Payton last night and really throughout the entire draft process, there was a lot of steam kind of uh, building towards Sean Payton, the Denver Broncos and Bo Nix. And and he was gushing over Bo last night. What is your initial uh, thought of Bo Nix, the fit in Denver in the fan base's reaction to him being a Denver Bronco? Well, regarding the fit, when, it, they had the 12th pick. It was always going to be tricky because they really don't have the assets to move up after trading three firsts and three seconds for Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. So to move up again for a quarterback was always going to be tricky. But I thought all along that Knicks was a fit. It's just, is he a fit at 12? Yeah. I like Knicks, but most people see he was probably the 25th to 45th best player in the draft. And so at 12, it's a little rich. But once Michael Penix goes at eight, they couldn't wait anymore. But when you ask about the fit, when you see Bo Nix talk today about processing information, and I joke that like with Peyton, he wants his quarterbacks to have the hardware and the software, and he wants a guy that's going to run his offense. One, two, three, get the ball out. Run the route tree. Run the plays we call. We're going to put you in position to succeed and give you autonomy, but don't take sacks. Don't play behind the sticks. So there's so much about what Bo Nix did, especially his last two years at Oregon, where you could see why Sean Payton fell in love with him. He doesn't take sacks. He barely throws any interceptions. He's a coach on the field. These are all the characteristics he had with Drew Brees. And I'm not comparing Bo to Drew Brees. That's not fair to him. But you can see some of the characteristics to why Sean Payton was attracted to him and gravitated to him. I was told for people I trust, they had him as their third quarterback on their board behind it was Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Bo Nix. So they feel really good about getting him at 12. As for what he's walking into here and the pressure, it's real. You know, in Broncos country, they are happy they took they, – they, they've tried everything in the last eight years except a, uh, basically a high first-round choice. Paxton Lynch was 26. So you have to remember that. This is really the last card to play. They've tried, re, you know, retread veteran uh, from Keenum to Flacco. Uh, they tried the savior in Russell Wilson. They tried the seventh-round pick in Trevor Simeon. They've tried everything. And none of it has worked. It's just disappointing across the board. I mean, there's times they've made looking passing a kidney stone easier than passing the football. That wasn't necessarily the case last year. They were better, but they've just been so bad offensively since Peyton Manning retired. So what yesterday represented to most fans I've talked to and interacted with on social media is hope and trust. You hope Nick's is the guy, and you have to trust that Sean Payton – can make him the guy. That's why they're paying Peyton $18 million a year. He's a quarterback whisperer. Well, this is his guy. And whether you think he got drafted too high or not, you got to at some point trust Sean Payton and his vision for him. So there's a lot of hope and trust going on right now here at Denver. Alongside that hope and trust and, and, and that vision, they've got the quarterback, but 
he's not exactly stepping into a team that has surrounded him with weapons. This isn't what the Bears have kind of done with Caleb Williams or Penix, as weird as that situation is, is kind of going into a situation, at least in Atlanta, where there's a lot around him. How confident are the the Broncos and, and those around the, the, the building that – they can keep kind of bow afloat in his rookie year and, and not make it one of those situations. And then they're not as bereft as the Carolina Panthers were the Bryce Young, but they don't necessarily have the the same kind of situation that the CJ Stroud stepped into last year, where um, the path isn't going to be quite as easy for him. They lack weapons. There's no way around that. And it's unclear whether Cortland Sutton's going to be here. He wants a new contract. He was their best receiver. He had 10 touchdowns, but he only had 772 yards. Marvin Mims is an intriguing player with Jerry Judy gone. He's going to have a bigger role. So he is a weapon similar to kind of Franklin was for him at Oregon. So that's a key. They need one of their tight ends between Lucas Kroll and Greg Dulcich to be functional, and they might have to even go draft one here. I would, I would expect they're going to get a running back to compete with Javante Williams. But you ask, how would they keep him afloat? It's simple that they like their offensive line way more than people do externally because they believe a lot of the sacks were on Russell Wilson. And they ran the ball pretty well. They just weren't as consistent with it the second half of the season as they wanted to be. But that's how they're going to protect Bo Nix, if, you want, if we're just being honest. Yeah. They are going to run the ball more, run it better, put him in position to succeed on second and six, third and four, not asking him to play hero ball third and 12. I mean, that, frankly, that's what got him into trouble at Auburn, trying to make plays that aren't there. And so he lacks weapons. That's 100% true. And that, that context matters. But with Peyton, the way it's been, if you watch and listen to Sean, he's going to try to have a team that runs the football, plays good defense, and has a quarterback that is smart and takes care of it. And the key with Knicks will then be, can he balance taking care of the ball and taking chances? Because in the NFL, you consistently have to win on third down. It's not college where guys are running around open and it's 52-7 to in the third quarter. You have to make those plays, and they loved what they saw from him on those dig routes, on those third downs, on not the – everyone, you know, they they banged uh, Bo for all he did was throw screen passes and stick and pick. Well, (laughs) if you watch the film, it was clearly more than that, and Peyton believes that. So how do they set him up for success? Frankly, it's run the heck out of the football and play good defense as he transitions into the role, and then at some point you've got to give him better weapons, and I think you will see that over the next two years. Yeah, we were talking about that just a little bit ago about how, you know, in college, you know, those quick processing, those one, two, three reads that Bo is so good at, the next evolution is going to be in the NFL, a guy who you think is covered in college, that's considered open in the NFL. And can that processing still be as quick? But, you know, with the weapons that hopefully maybe they can get one or two more uh, throughout the course of the next couple of days, maybe that helps him out. As the quarterback room stands, though, Zach Wilson, uh, they they traded for him earlier this week. What does that quarterback room look like now that Knicks is the guy at 12? And is is Bo being handed the the keys to the car right now from day one? No, he will never get that with Sean Payton. Sean Payton is uh, <laughs> Bill, Bill Parcells' protege. He's going to make him earn it. Obviously, in an ideal world, you know, he's starting week one. But you know, would I be shocked if it was the end of the first month? No, uh, because they're in a transition here uh, right now where they, they won't use the word rebuilding. The Broncos never have, but they really are. It's why they moved on from – well, that wasn't the only reason to move on from Russell, but it was part of it. And Justin Simmons and Josie Jewell and Lloyd Cushenberry, they made really no splashes in free agency this year. They want to get back to drafting and developing. So this is really a transition year. So they don't have to rush him out there. But if he's ready, if, if for me, again, if it's even between he and Zach Wilson, you start Bo Nix. Like, it's very simple. If it's any discussion where they're even, you play the young kid as long as he's mentally ready. You don't want to put him out there, especially here in Broncos country, and have him go 0-3 his first three starts with seven picks and one touchdown. You don't want to do that to him. And But how do I see this room developing? Between Knicks, or excuse me, between Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham, one of those two is not going to be on the team uh, during the regular season. One of them is going to get cut at the end of camp. I and mean, if you look at the money, it doesn't help Stidham because he's got $5 million guaranteed, where Zach uh, Wilson's 2.7. So would I be shocked if it's, both starting Zach Wilson backup and then Ben DiNucci practice squad? No, I would not. Uh, but, I mean, there's a world, too, where Stidham just outplays Zach Wilson in training camp, and he wins the job, and they eat the two and a half, two point seven million on Zach Wilson. So I, 
I just when people say he's going to start, Sean Payton is never going to say that. I asked him that specifically last night, and he's like, hey, they're all going to compete. We'll see how it's going to shake out. And he's right about that. Payton's not going to ever declare he's the starter. I just know he loves so much about him. Payton's legacy is on the line in terms of the Hall of Fame. If this works out, and two years from now the Broncos make a deep run in the playoffs, or if they get to a Super Bowl if within the five years of Payton's contract, his chances of going to the Hall of Fame increase dramatically. So he is very motivated for this to work for Bo Nix. But that said, he's an old-school guy. He's not going to hand him anything. And Bo wouldn't want that. You guys no. know him better than I do. He, this guy competes. He's all about competition, winning stuff. So if he plays, you're going to know he's ready. And they're not going to just throw him out there because he was their 12th pick overall. It's going to be because they think he gives them the best chance to win. When you take a look at this Broncos team, they're clearly in a transition period. There was discussion about uh, them being willing to include like a Patrick Sertan to to move up. It, when you look at the rest of this draft, it, it's not just the offense that needs some help. They, they need to focus on the defense too. Which way do you think the Broncos kind of go uh, throughout the rest of the draft? And are they done making any kind of big swings uh, over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, they just don't have a lot of draft capital to make big swings here. Their, their next pick is 76. They don't have a second-round pick. Again, they gave up six picks, three ones and three twos, to acquire Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. So they're not in a great position uh, to take a big swing today unless you want to give up like a number two next year, which I don't know that they would. But keep an eye on running back, tight end. Uh, they need – and other, they could also they need defensive line help, obviously, and they could pick up another corner. But they just signed Levi Wallace. But they really need another. And I wouldn't be shocked if they got a tackle too, because this could be Garrett Bowles' last year, year here. But in terms of weapons, it, tight end, receiver, running back, of those three, I would expect two of those to be addressed in the next few rounds because they they've got to add to the room. They're just not good enough. They've got guys you like, but they don't have enough playmakers. And I, I would expect you're going to see two to three skill players added over the next two days. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you taking some time for us. Hopefully, uh, personally, I'm a Raiders fan, so I wish nothing but terrible, terrible things on the Broncos endlessly. But I hope things go well for Nick's because he's been fantastic for here in Oregon uh, and that you guys get to have the experience that all the Oregon fans uh, got to have with him here because he was absolutely awesome. Uh, and looks sounds like his uh, initial press conference went out great with you guys. Troy, thanks for taking some time for us, and uh, we'll check in later with you, see how Nix is doing. You got it. Thanks yeah. for having me on. See no problem. Troy Rank of the Denver Post uh, on Bo Nix going to the Denver Broncos. That is, uh, and right there, a lot of that is kind of what we what we had discussed earlier, right, about what's going to what his strengths are with Sean Payton, what the weaknesses are. But the reality of it is, is – Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos are not in a place to win right now, and no. they know it. They know it, and that's why it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this quarterback room, how they choose to bring Bo along and develop him. Because, again, he said it there. They've only got one more pick in the top 100 mm -hmm. in, in this draft. We were talking yesterday. There's teams, you know, the Rams have got five picks in the top 100. Several teams, Cincinnati's got four picks in the mm -hmm. top 100. That, is, I think the Chargers have got four or There's five. There's somebody else we the were talking 100. about that we had six. Who was it? There is a, a ton of teams that are going to be getting better in this draft that is very deep. The fact that they traded for Russell Wilson last year, they got rid of their <laughs> second round pick, and now you only got one more pick, and it's at 76th. It's dang near near the middle of the third round, and so they've got to be very judicious on wh what position groups they attack. And tight end, he mentioned tight end being a position group of need. It's not a big tight end draft. No. All the tackles are going to be picked through it by the time you get to 76. Running back is probably going to be that spot where – we're going to see a run of running backs in the probably mid to late second round today. Maybe there's a running back or two that are still sitting there waiting for Denver I think, to pounce on. I think the first two backs are probably gone by then. And I think you're probably looking at USC's Marshawn Lloyd. That's a guy that I could see kind of fitting stylistically that you would associate with Sean Payton in Denver. But we'll see. Just because the running backs, I think you're going to see the, the, the top two guys are – clearly ahead i don't think you're gonna see uh lloyd probably go until a third round you minute. need a, a a receiving back out of the mm -hmm. backfield and that is going to be the biggest one because if you look at 
any of the backs, whether it was Sproles, Kamara, those guys, you have got to be a pass catcher out of that backfield. And, you know, you mentioned Marshawn Lloyd, uh, Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Yep. If he's still available, he f- kind of fits that mold as well. Uh, it, this will be pretty interesting to see where Denver goes because they need to start surrounding him with a little bit more talent because a, a lot more. Marvin Mims, he is... He's he open. was a rookie last year. He's a speedster. He's going to be able to get open. You've got to have more around him. That's and, the thing. And Cortland Sutton is wily vet of that group. Sure. They've got holes, man. And if you look at just go down the list of the AFC West, I mean, they're probably third right now only because the Chargers don't have any receivers. <laughs> Wait, the, the Broncos are third? Yeah. Oh, you mean in, in as far as like where they would... In, in the like, AFC West. Okay, I thought you were talking about ranking them in weapons. I was like, oh, no, they're very clearly fourth in weapons. No, it, of their receiver room, and that include Like, really, yeah. the Chargers are... Dude, they are not loaded That's true, at yeah, all. They, they don't they have, have anybody nothing. anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. God, is it Chiefs, Raiders... Yes. Then the twin toss between Chargers and Broncos? Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing about, that's why Harbaugh had to go to the podium yesterday and say, our weapon, we use offensive linemen as weapons. They got Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnston, Darius Davis. As of right now, they only have one other wide receiver on their roster, and it's Simi Fihoko. You made that name up. Should I have hit the dump button there? No. (laughs) Simi Fihoko. But the Chargers do have a second, a third, two fourths. And they are going to be very active. Yeah. So they can they can move up and find their wide receiver. Choice, Will probably. Disley, Hayden Hurst, Donald Parham. Why is their tight end? And they have their what? Their first pick is the fifth pick in the second round. So they there's going to be a wide receiver or two there. They need them. Yeah. So they'll figure that out. Again, that's Troy Rank of the Denver Post on Bo Nix. Good stuff. Yeah. No, it, it was, and and I it shouldn't be surprising to hear what we heard about Bo. Incredibly professional in the press conference. The a little bit of edge to him. Doesn't is definitely wants to go out there and earn it. This is all things that we've heard about both for the last two. Years. No doubt. Like, yeah, he's he on on the soft stuff. Bo's gonna hit a home run every single time, every single time. 